Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 1 Dowry Escort Qi Yunruo sat in bed dressed in green, the fireworks outside suddenly increasing in volume. His head rested on the edge of the bed, long lashes casting shadows upon his cheeks. There were no servants left in the house. Today was the wedding of Count Xiang Estate's sole legitimate daughter. Earlier, an older female servant had called for two of the low-ranking servant girls to help outside. Not long after, Kuiu, the mistress personal maid servant, knocked on Qi Yunruo's door. On her face was a trace of happiness courtesy of the joyous occasion, but when speaking to him her tone was neither warm nor cold. The mistress calls for third young master to go to eldest Miss Courtyard. Raising his head to glance at her, Qi Yunruo nodded and said, Understood. Although the eldest Miss East Courtyard was not especially large, Count Ziang and his main wife had doted on their daughter since childhood. Currently, her courtyard was the picture of festivity, red silk draping from every surface, charming and exquisite throughout. Count Ziang waited outside of his beloved daughter's room. It was inevitable he would come visit her as the time for the wedding drew near. As such, he happened to meet Qi Yunruo. Master, said Kuiu as soon as she laid eyes on him. Mistress has called for third young master to come over. As Qi Yunruo attempted to kowtow to the door, Kuiu quickly held him up and frowned. Careful of wrinkling your clothes, third young master. Distracted, he reacted just in time to change his course and quickly made his way before the mistress. He saluted. The eldest miss, Qi Nikan, appeared to be in tears, leaning on the countess without a sound. Distracted, she did not look at anyone. The countess maiden name was Zhao. She caressed her daughter's hand, a soft sigh escaping her lips. Then without turning to Qi Yunruo, she said, You've been called because I have some orders for you. What are the mistress' orders? His voice was soft and light. I've told you this before, but Prince Chun's estate already has two secondary consorts. There were also a few lower-ranked concubines. The harem is not small at all. Although your elder sister Nikon has a noble birth, the prince already has an eldest son. You must always remember that your elder sister is also your master. Always be alert and protect her. Do not imitate those vixens and their vulgar behavior. From Chi Yunruo's mouth came one word. Understood. As a person coming from my household, your status will not be low. Not only that, you're also the younger brother of the princess consort. No one will bully you, added the countess. In fact, your situation right now is better than if you marry a girl from a small family in the future, once our household splits. Your birth mother had passed on early. The count and I will not treat you poorly. Once you're older, you'll be able to leave the prince estate and both the prince estate and ours will compensate you with shares. If you're lucky, wouldn't serving the prince be better than a few years of studying hard? Although Qi Yunruo listened, he did not respond. The countess had said these words several times before. As Qi Yunruo listened distractedly, she sent him out and continued to comfort her daughter. A red veil had already covered Qi Nikon's face, her makeup perfectly applied and her attire masterfully adjusted. After observing it from multiple angles, Countess Ziang decided there was nothing wrong with her daughter's appearance. Once you step foot into the prince estate, there will be no one around to help you. The people there won't be ordinary. I've carefully picked the servant girls who will follow you and made sure none of them are too eye-catching. But if you have a sister to accompany you or more specifically your brother, you'll be more secure. Even if the prince favors him in the future, he will never be able to give birth to a child. No matter what, his status will not threaten yours. Softy, Chi Nikon said, mother and father are so thoughtful toward me. If that child doesn't follow customs, just let me know. I'll give him a strict warning. If he accompanies me to the prince estate, he won't dare cause any trouble, said Chi Nikon. Countess Ziang beamed. Kuner is blessed. The second imperial prince is the most likely to become the next emperor. So, in the future, she leaned closer to her daughter. 
Kunar will become the mother of the realm. For a moment, Chinikin kept silent. Then she said, Mother, didn't you just say there are many people in the prince estate? Holding her hand, Countess Ziang said, Kunar, as long as your father is here, you don't have to worry. Countess Ziang had racked her head to help her only daughter survive in the next household. Although Chi Nikan's appearance was comely, life was not without setbacks. There were people around her that could steal the second imperial prince's affection. By chance, Countess Ziang overheard that the second imperial prince had once stayed overnight at a male brothel. Recalling Chi Yunruo's appearance, which resembled his lowborn mother's, she couldn't help but frown. As a member of the imperial family, the second imperial prince Li Chen, titled Prince Chun, did not come to personally receive Qi Nikan for their wedding. There was no need to show off to others. As Qi Nikan saluted and bid farewell to her parents, Qi Yunruo boarded the carriage meant for dowry escorts. His father, Count Ziang, did not come to see him again. Meanwhile, a few of his brothers and sisters went to see off Qi Nikan. Trailing after Chi Nikan were four personal servant girls who had been attending to her since childhood. Since Chi Yunruo's current status was just a dowry escort, there would naturally not be too many people waiting on him. One of those was Countess Ziang's personal servant girl, Li Yisu. As a personal maid of the Countess, Li Yisu received a lot of face from the other servants. The Countess had also prepared in advance a small child, about eight to nine years old to prepare Qi Yunruo's brushes and grind ink. Xiao Xiqing was his name. Qi Yunruo examined the carriage. Including him, there were three people sitting within. He secretly lifted the curtain to peek outside. He, immediately caught sight of the corner of the bride's wedding dress, just as the heir of Count Ziang's estate, Qi Yunchen, lifted the newlyweds into their designated carriage. As Qi Yunruo tried to stick his head out of the window, to see more clearly, Li Yisu snorted. Young master. Her words prompted Qi Yunruo to return to his seat, his expression now betraying disinterest. Not a word left his lips. Of Count Ziang's three sons and three daughters, only the heir Qi Yunchen and the eldest Miss Qi Nikan were born from Countess Ziang. The mother of the second young master, Qi Yunying, died early. She had also been Countess Ziang's maidservant originally. The mother of the second young miss, Qi Dangzia, was the daughter of an official from the Ministry of Revenue. Maiden name, Lu. Count Ziang doted on her. After the emperor appointed the marriage between Qi Nikan and the second imperial prince, Count Ziang finalized the marriage proposal between Qi Dangzia and the Minister of Revenue's eldest son. It was said to be a good match. Then there was the odd one out, Qi Yunruo. His birth mother had been a prostitute from the Pleasure District. Once she had become with child, Count Ziang redeemed her from the brothel. Before the age of six, Qi Yunruo lived with his mother in a house on King Z Street. After she had passed away, Count Ziang brought him back to the estate. But there had been no one willing to raise him. Count Ziang later summoned an old female servant for that purpose. Just to fulfill his obligations as a father. She was stern, not the type to get close to others. Later, when Qi Yunruo reached marriageable age, the old female servant returned to her hometown to be waited on by her grandchildren. The screeching of wheels filled the carriage. After a while, Qi Yunruo felt bored. To relieve said boredom, he attempted to strike a conversation with the little servant boy, Xiao Xiqing whom he asked. Are you literate? Yes. Xiao Xiqing cautiously said. Qi Yunruo smiled, shuffling closer. What books have you read? Just a bit of the three character classics. Roughly schemed it. This one did not really read any books. Somewhat disappointed, Qi Yunruo did not respond any more. Instead, he leaned against the wall of the carriage, feeling lethargic. He lacked any great ambition in his life. In the eight years he had lived in the Count's estate, he had been so neglected by both the Count and Countess that he didn't even have the chance to meet any guests. In fact, his name had only been added to the genealogy list two years ago. 
it had been his birth mother who taught him how to read and write, as well as how to play the gookin. The mother and son pair had been inseparable. Later on, when he became alone, Chi Yunruo dreamed of taking the imperial examinations. Of becoming a humble official, compile books for his whole life, or perhaps copy cases. Now the last embers of his own dreams had been snuffed out. Countess Xiang was the one who had proposed Chi Nikon's dowry. The Count had not objected. By having their daughter marry into the second imperial prince's estate, their family was now pressed towards his side. Having multiple bargaining chips was always a smart move. Additionally, the matters regarding Chi Yunruo's marriage had brought the Count worry. Although the status of illegitimate children from his household was not humble, just hearing about Chi Yunruo's life would spoil others' mood. In the Countess' eyes, Chi Yunruo looked weak. However, she was afraid that his heart might harbor evil intentions. For this reason, Countess Ziang sent one of her second-rank servant girls, Li Yisu, to monitor him. It helped that Li Yisu was intelligent and loyal towards Chi Nikan. However, Li Yisu found this powerless young master incomprehensible. After riding for about one hour, Chi Yunruo heard someone knock twice on the carriage. Li Yisu quickly lifted the curtain for Chi Yunruo, and a few rough labor servants came to view. In front stood a young woman who said, May the young master please disembark from the carriage. Only the principal wife had the privilege of stepping through the main door. Concubines were relegated to the doors on the side of the estate. Yet the door in front of Chi Yunruo was not even that. Small, with a rusted knocker. The sight of it caused Li Yisa some discontent, but she merely frowned. Chi Yunruo remained silent, holding a small hand brazier as he walked. There was no one to even lift a palanquin through the door. Further up ahead, a group of older female servants surrounded him as they passed through a moon gate. Then a woman with a yellow flower tucked into her hair appeared. She touched Chi Yunruo's hand, a smile tugging on the corners of her mouth. How old is this little young master? A slight smile graced Chi Yunruo's lips. Fifteen. Hearing his response, some people helplessly sighed as they indulged in chit-chat. Chi Yunruo stood close enough to pick up on some of their gossip. Apparently, the Ji family's daughter had also been fifteen years old when she first entered this estate. After that, they mentioned how the princess consort was sixteen. That the then fifteen years old Ji family daughter and the currently sixteen year old princess consort were both naive and ignorant starting out. However, the secondary consorts had already controlled the inner courtyard for three years. In the future, who would come up on top was anyone's guess. To enter the inner courtyard, one must start by walking through the right corridor lining a lake. Five to six yards from the left corridor stood a few servant girls pointing and laughing. The target of their mockery, Chi Yunruo. Yet he was not mad. He found their actions interesting. Although their eyes reflected contempt, these servants did not carry any malice toward him. Suddenly, the servants went quiet. Standing by the side, Chi Yunruo stared blankly at a crowd of people passing by the left corridor. Led by a man dressed in red wedding attire, a high crown perched on top his head. He seemed to be aware of someone watching him from afar. Across the water, Chi Yunruo watched carefully, emblazoning the image in his mind. Chapter End Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 2 Prince Chun The inner courtyard looked completely different from the outside. The group of women that had previously trailed Chi Yunruo did not follow him inside. In fact, other than Li Yisuo and Xiao Siqing, the only people traveling with him were a low-ranking eunuch and two first-rank servant girls. These servants stopped once the group was in front of the Winter Plum Courtyard. The residence in which Chi Nikan would live from now on. Its specifications were a little less grand than that of the prince's residence, the Ink Lotus Courtyard. Standing by the entrance was a steward eunuch called, Eunuch Gao. As he started to walk, Eunuch Gao said, By the rules of the estate, the princess consort will have her own residence. 
the two secondary consorts live in the western frost autumn courtyard together, and the four tertiary consorts live in the back residence, the sunset courtyard. There are also three regular concubines who live together in Tinglin House. Besides the prince, the princess consort has the most power and the largest residence. You will be living there as well. Although Eunuk Gao had said this, in reality Chi Yunruo would only be living in the winter plum courtyard by the slightest technicality. A small garden separated his two-room suite on the south side from Chi Nikan's main chamber. Chi Yunruo didn't pay much attention as he had listened to Eunuk Gao speak. How much he had actually heard was anyone's guess. Because of this, Li Yisu shot him a look. She walked up to Eunuk Gao. Our young master is young and careless. May Eunuk Gao please advise him in the future. Finished speaking, Li Yisu retrieved a piece of silver from her sleeves and handed it to the steward eunuch. After receiving the silver, Eunuk Gao carelessly put it away. Young master will have two people attending to you in your suite. Including Miss Li Yisu, there will be three servants. Everything has already been prepared. This old slave will no longer accompany you. Chi Yunruo would not be living here for long. His name had been added to the dowry list only recently. As such, it wasn't unusual for the prince estate to not have a proper place for him. Once his sister, Chi Nikan, became familiarized with living here, Chi Yunruo would be pushed out of her residence. Have a safe trip, Eunuk Gao, Li Yisu said as she sent him off. Meanwhile, Xiao Xiching examined the first small house. Two servants' girls saluted them from the inside. Greetings to young master. Exhausted, Chi Yunruo sat on the bed provided for him. He swept his gaze through the servants without saying a word. Then he asked, What will be my duties later? Xiao Xiching unfurled the schedule parchment. Took a look and stated, Today there isn't much to do. However, Young master must wake up very early tomorrow to attend to the prince and eldest miss in the morning. And your honored self must also wear a new outfit. Chi Yunruo asked, when will eldest miss enter the prince estate? Soon. Chi Yunruo said nothing. In his heart hid a clawing sort of fear and a sadness that he didn't know how to put into words. Starting from a month ago, upon waking each day, he would be bombarded by those two emotions. His life was inexplicably disrupted. He was now unsure on how to move forward. The newlyweds would soon arrive at Winter Plum Courtyard, to the main chamber at the front. Chi Yunruo cracked open the window and glanced outside. Then he saw the second imperial prince. After Li Chen had delivered his bride to the room, he shut the door behind him. As he spun on his heel, on his way to the celebratory banquet, Li Chen felt as though someone was looking at his direction. He turned around again in time to catch sight of Chi Yunruo. The moment their eyes met, Chi Yunruo slammed the window shut. The banquet stretched on, sounds of cheer and laughter permeating even the walls of Chi Yunruo's small suite. Still, he was able to sleep through the loudest moments. Before dawn arrived, Li Yisu shook him awake. It was about time to enter the main chamber. Since he had slept in his clothes, Chi Yunruo's hair was in slight disarray, a few strands was loose here and there. Li Yisu helped him brush his hair. Helped him into a new green outfit before he took his leave. Chi Nikan had brought four personal maidservants who had served her since childhood to the estate. Their names were Li Yubai, Li Yufang, Li Yuyu, and Li Yuling. The four of them looked stunning as they stood still outside the main chamber. Once Li Yisu brought Chi Yunruo right before the entrance, she instructed him to take the basin of water from Li Yubai's hands. A soft cough could be heard from inside the room. Two tall maidservants, who seemed like overnight attendants, pushed the doors open from the inside. In walked Li Yubai and the three other maids, with Chi Yunruo following behind them. Li Yisu trailed at the back. One of the tall maidservants drew the curtains of the windows. Then she maneuvered around a divider screen to the master bedroom. The red curtains hanging from the bed, which doubled for mosquito nets, were still closed. The silhouette of a single person sitting upright could be seen. 
Li Yubai and the three other maids had already seen this person before. They saluted and said, Paying respects to your highness. Li Chen nodded. Seeing that Qi Yunruo did not move, Li Yasu nudged him. He lost his balance. Splashed some of the basin's water on the two servants before him. Qi Yunruo hesitantly lifted his eyes, then remembered his duties. Quickly, he took a few steps forward and knelt by the bed. He lifted the basin of water. Li Chen said nothing. If the master did not speak, no one else would dare to. Qi Yunruo's shoulders started to grow stiff and tired. However, Li Chen had yet to use the basin. As such, Qi Yunruo could only grit his teeth and endure. In this tense moment, Qi Yunruo helplessly pondered over his master's actions. Or rather, the lack of action. In Qi Yunruo's opinion, he had already fulfilled his duties properly. He sneaked a peek at Li Chen. Saw Li Chen lowering his own head to look at him. Panicking, Qi Yunruo quickly dropped his gaze. Who are you? Those words shocked Qi Yunruo to the core. Once again, he lifted his gaze, staring dazedly at the man before him. This man was twenty years old, handsome in a heroic and righteous way, and possessed a high nose. His gaze was serious as he stared at Qi Yunruo. Qi Yunruo was rendered speechless. L. Yu Xian, a servant who had attended to the prince since childhood, presented Li Chen Ti. She said, This is the young master from the princess consort's family. Li Chen nodded. Everyone leave. Don't bother the princess consort. Sure enough, the rest of the people in the room followed Li Chen outside. Furrowing her brow, Li Yisu pulled Qi Yunruo to his feet. Finally, he realized that everyone had left. He followed suit. On the other hand, both Li Yubai and Li Yisu stayed behind, waiting for Qi Nikan to rouse from slumber. Maneuvering his way around the screen divider, Li Chen sat on the small couch just beyond. This time, Qi Yunruo was quick to perform his duties, immediately kneeling before the prince, the basin of water raised high. As Li Chen washed his face, the other servants handed basins of salt and mouthwash to Qi Yunruo to present to Li Chen. His arms started to grow sore again. After Li Chen finished brushing his teeth, he glanced at Qi Yunruo once more. Naturally, Li Chen would recognize him. It had taken just a glance from yesterday. Separated by ten or so yards, he had caught sight of a young teen surrounded by several female servants. Such a sight was too conspicuous. If a dowry escort was female, as the sister or niece of the household's mistress, she had a chance of becoming a side consort in the future. On the other hand, because males could not give birth, aristocratic families often sent some to their newlywed daughters' households as part of their dowry. Generally, these men were left untitled. Not to mention that their futures were practically ruined, only a minuscule amount of them were liked by powerful masters. Although it's possible for them to pick up a career as officials in the future, the chances were slim. It was hard to garner respect even in the odd chance they succeeded in becoming an official. While Li Chen felt his own thoughts strange, when he first laid eyes on Qi Yunruo, his immediate impression was as followed, Qi Yunruo did not seem like that kind of person. In Li Chen's estate, there was already a Ji Huan, a guest of secondary consort Ji, who was gentle and courteous to others. Originally, Li Chen had thought to send him out of the estate after some time had passed. The time spent here wouldn't have been wasted if Ji Huan could buy some deeds and set up some industries. Your Highness, the princess consort has awakened. Qi Yunruo rose to his feet, patting his knees to relieve the strain. He went to stand by the side. Then, in one fluid moment, Chi Nikan slowly came out from behind the screen divider. She had transformed into a different person overnight. Yesterday, as she wore a large phoenix crown, although she appeared beautiful and exquisite, the bridal attire of a princess consort had seemed too heavy and complicated for her. She still had the demeanor of a maiden. Now her hair was styled into a cloud bun, a long hairpin inserted to keep the hairstyle together. 
At the end of the hairpin dangled three strands of small pearls. The gentleness of a married woman had replaced the demeanor of a maiden. Li Chen personally helped Qi Nikan into her seat. Then, the rest of the servants saluted. Paying respects to Her Highness. Qi Yunruo's soft voice could not be distinguished from the others. He waited for the couple to finish eating breakfast. After the meal ended, as a dowry escort, he would follow them into the imperial palace to pay respects to their elders. Before that could happen, however, Li Yisou pushed him back into his little suite. As soon as they entered through the doorway, she said, What happened this morning? His voice betrayed a hint of awkwardness. I don't know. Li Yisou sat down. She felt that the way the prince looked at Qi Yunruo had been strange. She spent a moment pondering. Let's not worry about this for now. First, we need to help eldest miss secure a foothold in the estate. As such, third young master must watch the prince's expression carefully when fulfilling your duty. Li Yisu, Li Yubai and the others were servants that Countess Ziang had nurtured for a long time. The Count estate still had three, Li Yishang, Li Yuyu and Li Yigi. The four that had accompanied Qi Nikan were already the best of the bunch though they could not be considered beautiful. Out of those servants, Li Yisou was the youngest, and her status was the lowest as accordingly. The rest were first-ranked servant girls personally trained by Countess Ziang. Thinking herself as the most talented of the group, Li Yisou aimed to be seen as very loyal to Countess Ziang and Qi Nikan. For that reason, she was also very cold to Qi Yunruo, and believed that she could use him to gain benefits for herself. Qi Yunruo's entire dowry could fit in one carriage. Other than Li Yisuo and Xiao Siqing, he also had two cases, neither of them big nor small. The smaller one contained items left by his mother. The larger one was given by the Count, and contained undergarments and small ornaments. His two houses were connected to each other. They weren't too small. Eunuch Gao had summoned Xiao Siqing outside today so there were only Li Yisuo and two servant girls left in his suite. He now had the time to speak with them. With their hair arranged into two small buns, the servant girls appeared to be around 11 to 12 years old. They saluted Qi Yunruo. Then he asked them for their names, and their future aspirations. One of them replied that her name was Xiao Shan. The other revealed her name to be Xiao Zhu. They were brought into the estate two years ago, and had never attended to the masters before. Both of them were very nimble with their hands. Xiao Shan showed Qi Yunruo her embroidery of a duckling, and Xiao Zhu outstretched her arm to show off her sleeve. She said she was learning how to tailor clothes. Li Chen and Qi Nikan stayed inside the palace until lunch ended. In the prince estate, Eunuch Gao instructed people to serve Qi Yunruo his meal. Two meat dishes and two vegetable dishes. Once the food had arrived, Qi Yunruo gestured for the two servant girls to share the meal with him. This action prompted Li Yisu to shoot them a look. The three of them devoured the food, leaving not a grain of rice behind. Afterward, Qi Yunruo inquired from Xiao Shan and Xiao Zhu about the matters of the estate. Back in the Count estate, it was already hard for news from the outside to enter the eldest Miss Courtyard. It was even harder for his own. Therefore, Qi Yunruo was completely ignorant of the situation here. The two servant girls did not know much. However, they still knew more than Qi Yunruo. According to them, Li Chen was the current second prince of the empire. He was born from the empress, and was granted the title of Prince Chun and given his own palace at 15 years old. He was 20 years old this year. Three years ago, the eldest daughter of the Minister of War's right assistant, Ji Ro, married into his estate as a secondary consort. One year ago, the daughter of the Imperial Academy's sacrificial wine specialist, Wei Qiang, married into the estate as a secondary consort as well. The Imperial Palace also bestowed four tertiary consorts of lesser birth. Two from the Empress Dowager and two from the Empress. Not only that, there were three regular concubines which the prince had brought from the palace once he received his own estate. After Xiao Shan finished speaking, she paused. 
Then, she slowly said, this is just the estate's inner courtyard, but there's another place in the forecourt. It's where Ji Huan, a young master from the Ji family, stays. Hum. Li Yisua shuffled closer, her tone serious. Isn't that the younger brother of secondary consort Ji? Xiao Shan nodded. Once, when Nanny Cheng sent me to the front to deliver something, I saw him. Apparently, he's the younger illegitimate brother of consort Ji, and has been staying here for the past two years. Xiao Ju shook her head. It's actually the elder illegitimate brother. What? Xiao Shan couldn't understand the implication behind her fellow servant's words. Although Xiao Ju was young, she saw the situation clearly, and coughed once. Young Master Ji came here when Consort Ji first became pregnant. The little master is now one and a half years old. A frown slid its way across Li Yisu's lips, her voice but a whisper. The prince's eldest son is already so big. Eldest miss must give birth to a son soon. Chapter End Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 3 the concubines. After Li Chen and Qi Nikan returned from the palace in the afternoon, Li Chen immediately left for the Ministry of Revenue, the emperor having summoned him there. Due to his wedding matters, Li Chen had been allowed a month of vacation, and was free to run a few errands for the emperor. Meanwhile, Qi Yunruo was taking a nap. Li Yisu shook him awake and instructed him to leave for the estate's storage warehouse. As Qi Yunruo dazedly sat up from bed, from the corner of his mouth glistened a bead of drool. Li Yisu wiped it off with a handkerchief, her expression one of disgust. She lifted Qi Yunruo to his feet to adjust his attire. Count Ziang's estate had prepared 128 crates of dowry, two plots of farmland, and four storefronts for their precious daughter. Other than this, there were wedding gifts from other families in the imperial palace. For this reason, besides Qi Yunruo, Eunuch Gao brought four imperial guards and one older female servant to personally help Qi Nikan record and organize the items. The external general manager of Winter Plum Courtyard was Eunuch Gao. Whereas, the internal general manager was Nanny Cheng. Directly under them were four older female servants and two eunuchs. Qi Nikan's nursemaid, surnamed Song, was about the same age as Nanny Cheng. Nanny Song gave off a clever impression. Nanny Cheng was sturdy and peaceful and did not mind that the other woman often showed off in front of her. Once the prince returned home again, he immediately headed for the study. On the other hand, Chi Nikan sat in the main room of her courtyard, watching as the servants recorded her dowry and sorted them into crates. Come nightfall, the servants would deliver the crates to the storage warehouse, to be further organized. There were also large, unwieldy items sent to the warehouse, such as screen dividers and lumber. The task of recording the dowry fell upon Qi Yunruo. He wrote down every word of Eunuch Gao. One golden great argus and pearl dangling hair ornament, one golden jade inlaid butterfly and love flower dangling hair ornament, one white crystal peony dangling hair ornament, and one golden five-colored jewel jade speck long hairpin. Place these in box A3. One white gold white pearl jade medallion and one red jade golden pearl jade medallion. Place these in box A4. A jade medallion, or Jinbu. A set of four embroidered four seasons gold and sandalwood screen dividers. Place these in box C34. Five 100 year old Jingseng roots. Place these in box B11. One box of rubies, one box of sapphires. Qi Yunruo did not stop until the moment the servants lit the lights of the estate, the sun having set completely. He rubbed at his eyes. Pulled up the wick of an oil lamp's candle so that it would shine brighter, when someone spoke right by his ear. Young master should return. It's meal time. He lifted his head and found himself eye to eye with Li Yisu. She and the rest of Qi Nikan's maid servants were still busy, not one of them pausing from their work. He flicked his gaze at Chi Nikan. Upon closer inspection, her makeup was beginning to smudge. Third young master, just leave the work to others, General Manager Cheng said with a smile. 
it's almost time for the meal to be served. Just let me know whatever young master likes to eat. Yesterday, this old slave was very busy in the princess consort's winter plum courtyard and couldn't meet third young master. From your appearance you seem very honest, so don't let yourself be wronged. Thank you General Manager Cheng, said Chi Yunruo. Chi Nikan had left the main room a while ago. Chi Yunruo was unsure if he should also return. He paced back and forth at the warehouse, and when he finally left for the winter plum courtyard, he came across Chi Nikan. She merely glanced at him, not in the mood to gesture for him to come over nor to chat for a bit. Chi Yunruo also had reservations of approaching her, in case she did not want him to do so. As soon as he had arrived at the entrance of his own suite, Chi Yunruo heard someone announce, His Highness has arrived. He paused. Then he bolted inside as if frightened. Li Yisu, who had been following right behind him, was also startled from his abrupt actions. Why are you running, she said, frowning. He did not answer her, calling Xiao Shan to bring some water to wash his hands instead. The evening meal consisted of two meat dishes and two vegetable dishes. This time, soup was also included. After Li Yisu had sternly lectured them, Xiao Shan and Xiao Ju no longer dared to break protocol and eat with their master at the same table. Yet Qi Yunruo felt it was somewhat a pity. Since an early age, he had only ever eaten alone. When the Count's family ate their meals, they never sent someone to his small courtyard, to tell him to come eat with them. Rather, he would sit at a small table by himself and partake in his meal, a single dish and a bowl of porridge. Earlier, they had also recorded Chi Yunruo's dowry. After eating, Chi Yunruo and Li Yisu decided to organize them back into their designated chest. He furrowed his brow as he observed Li Yisu, who was scrutinizing the items. She patted the dust off her hands. This is all you have. Chi Yunruo did not respond. He placed his dowry back into the small chest his mother had left him. This included a tiny box containing a few pieces of his mother's jewelry and a single jade medallion from Count Ziang. There were also two books of musical scores. In the afternoon, as Li Yisu had checked Chi Nikan's dowry, her heart felt a little discontent. No matter what, Chi Yunruo was her master, and at the very least, he was still considered a young master of Count Ziang's estate. However, the estate had not given him any shop deeds or jewelry upon his departure. He did not even receive 5.5 kilograms of silver. Even Li Yisu was wealthier than him. For a moment, she found him rather pitiful. Now that it was nighttime, Chi Yunruo wanted to take a bath. As per her duty as a servant, Li Yisu went to find the fat eunuch Yunbao in charge of water. He laughed loud and reverberating from the pit of his stomach. Everyone is exhausted today. Therefore, all of the water has been sent to the princess consort's side. If young master wants to take a bath, I'll have people go to the other courtyards and see if there's any hot water left. Even if it's just a little bit, we'll still give it to you. Understanding the meaning behind his words, Li Yisu ran back, fuming. Her expression was dark as she looked at Chi Yunruo. They think young master is not noble enough. In just two days, they've already noticed that your status is very low. I want to wash my feet, said Chi Yunruo. They should at least have enough water for that, right? As Li Yisu was unwilling to endure the mockery again, he sent Xiao Shan and Xiu Ju out instead. After a while, they returned carrying a wooden basin of water. Chi Yunruo removed his socks and shoes, sat down on his bed, and soaked his feet, rubbing them against one another. He lowered his head, hands pressing upon the bed to support his weight. Held his feet right above the basin. He watched the surface of the water silently. Droplets of water fell upon the water's surface, creating ripples that lasted for just a moment. Back in Count Ziang's estate, there had been no one supervising Chi Yunruo. Now, like clockwork, Li Yisu woke him up every morning. Then she would help him into a grey outfit and comb part of his hair up behind him, leaving the rest down. Currently, 
Li Yisu was also helping him comb his hair. She said, Today is when all the secondary consorts, tertiary consorts, and the rest of the prince's concubines come to pay respects to our eldest miss. Don't be late. Having just awoken, Chi Yunruo's mind was not yet clear. A moment later, he said, What should I do? Is that Ji Huan coming too? Li Yisu's hand paused. Young Master Ji Huan is not the same as you. He is here as a guest of secondary consort Ji and stays in the forecourt. You are a dowry escort and can only stay in the inner courtyard. Chi Yunruo studied his reflection in the mirror. From his lips came a faint sound of acknowledgement. Of the other concubines, he was the earliest to arrive at the parlor. His sister, of course, was already there as well. Li Yisu saluted. Paying respects to eldest miss. A slight smile graced Chi Nikon's lips. She gestured for Li Yisu to approach. Were these past few days at the prince estate well for you, she said, studying the servant before her. Li Yisu was one of her mother's people. There was no reason to doubt her loyalty. Li Yisu quickly said, this lowly one has been well. Thanking eldest miss for her concern. Chi Nikon turned to look at Chi Yunruo, the latter unsure of what to call the former. Should he address her as eldest miss or princess consort? Until now he still could not decide. She waved her hand, the faint smile never leaving her mouth. Third younger brother, come here. Although he complied, he did not feel too comfortable sitting next to her. Chi Nikon scrutinized the teen before her, gaze serious. They had lived in the Count estate together for the past eight years. When the Count first brought Chi Yunruo into the estate, the Countess had been livid for several days. To this day, Chi Nikon still remembered her mother's words back then. I've had to endure many concubines in this estate, and the outside is filthy and odious. Why should such a dirty thing live in the same place as my own children? What kind of thing is his mother? What if this brat learned those vulgar methods from her? He's going to ruin our estate's good atmosphere. Needless to say, her mother loathed the child Chi Yunruo and refused to take care of him. She did not have him pay respects to her in the morning, teach him the estate's protocol, or teach him how to read and write. As if she had forgotten his existence. And since her father felt guilty toward her mother and had not much love for that son to begin with, he also ignored Chi Yunruo. That was the case year after year. Until the emperor bestowed a marriage between Chi Nikon and Prince Chun, that was. Her mother had then racked her head in trying to find a suitable person to be Chi Nikon's dowry escort. But try as she might, her mother could not find someone. The countess was afraid that if she chose a servant girl, she would be led astray by greed. Greed for position, greed for power. Just like the mother of Chi Nikon's illegitimate brother Chi Yunying. The only sister that was the right age to be a dowry escort had been Dangxia. However, Dangxia was beautiful and stubborn. Her mother saw her as even more of a threat. Then the countess remembered there was still Chi Yunruo. Suitable. He was simply too suitable. He was beautiful, had an identity that was not too humble, and could not give birth to a child. When she became pregnant and needed someone to attract the prince's affection from the other concubines, wasn't this younger brother the best choice? Chi Nikon raised a hand to touch her brother's head. But as soon as she had lifted it, she hesitated. Instead, she opted for patting Chi Yunruo's back a few times. She smiled. Third younger brother does not yet have a vertical crown. You look younger with your hair done like this. Later. Tell your older sister Li Yubai to bring out some of the prince's old crowns. Before Chi Yuruo could respond, Li Yisu said, The consorts have arrived. Chi Nikon sat up straight. Chi Yunruo rose from his seat and went to stand by the side. Then Chi Nikon slowly said, Let them inside. Not long after, several beautiful women entered the parlor, sashaying with each step. They saluted together. Paying respects to Her Highness, the Princess Consort. Chi Nikon waved her hand once. No need to stand on ceremony. As he stood silently by the side, 
Chi Yunruo studied the first woman standing in front of the crowd. The word curvaceous came to mind. She got beautiful eyes. She was the one who gave birth to the prince's eldest son, secondary consort Ji. He shifted his gaze to the woman standing next to her. She looked thin and frail. Her eyes reflected a delicate sort of beauty. Finally, the concubines standing in the back were not as distinguishable. They wore similar outfits and makeup as each other, though they were of different ages. The main wife, Princess Consort Chi Nikon, gestured for them to take their seats. This is my first time meeting with you sisters. I'm not sure of your preferences, so I casually prepared a few things. If you don't hate them, then have them. We don't dare to hate the Princess Consort's things, Secondary Consort Ji said. It's just that we are coarse and are afraid that we can't discern what is good. Chi Nikan arched a brow. She did not respond. Li Yubai, Li Fang, Li Yuyu, and Li Yuling each brought a tray of things over to the crowd of concubines. Once everyone took an item, Secondary Consort Ji broke the silence. Today I should have brought elder brother here, but he caught a cold yesterday and could not get out of bed. I will bring him another day to pay respects to the princess consort. Tertiary consort Lee smiled as she said, Every other day, Master Ji either catches a cold or has a stomach ache, bothering the prince all day long. Fortunately, the princess consort has married in, and will teach Master Ji properly from now on. Although secondary consort Ji's expression took a turn for the worse, tertiary consort Lee was not one bit afraid. This lowly one's daughter is two months old, she said, facing Chi Nikan. If your highness is willing to look after her, it will be that girl's blessing. Secondary consort Wei did not join in on the fun, sipping tea by herself. After a while she said, your highness tea is not ordinary. This concubine can tell from the taste that this tea is Mount Lu's cloud fog. Chi Nikan did not rush her words. It's not really something that good. If secondary consort Wei likes it so much, I'll have a servant girl give some to you. Secondary consort Wei smiled. This concubine thanks the princess consort. She turned to Chi Yunruo. Is this Count Ziang Estate's third young master? Following her words, Chi Yunruo glanced at the young woman who had mentioned him. Then he turned his gaze to Chi Nikan. Third younger brother, why aren't you paying respects to the two secondary consorts? As Prince Chun's princess consort, Chi Nikan was granted the title of first-ranked honored lady. The secondary consorts were second-ranked honored ladies and the tertiary consorts were given the title of fourth-ranked honored lady. On the other hand, the other concubines were sixth-ranked honored ladies, and the personal attendants were seventh-ranked honored ladies. Since Chi Yunruo was a commoner, he had to do whatever Chi Yunruo said. Facing the concubines, he kowtowed before standing up. Not a word left his lips. Secondary consort Wei's smile did not quite reach her eyes. She glanced at secondary consort Ji, who said, What a beautiful younger brother. Come closer so I can have a better look. Chi Yunruo lifted his head. Then walked over a few steps. Secondary consort Ji said, Never have I seen such a neat looking child. As expected of someone raised at Count Ziang's estate. The two secondary consorts should stop jesting, said Chi Nikan. He's just a small child that doesn't know anything. He doesn't even know how to speak properly. Secondary Consort Wei observed Chi Yunruo some more. Consort Ji's elder brother is staying in the forecourt. When you have some free time, you can go there to chat. The moment those words left her lips, Chi Nikan's expression held a bit of reluctance. Tertiary Consort Li, who was standing by the side, said, This lowly one has been bothering the Princess Consort for too long. Your Highness has just recently married in so there should be a lot of things to prepare. This lowly one will take her leave. Chi Nikan's expression darkened even more. Secondary consort Ji's expression also did not fare well. She was the first one out of the remaining concubines to stand and salute. If your highness has any pressing matters, just send someone to find this concubine. 
This concubine will take her leave for now. Li Yubai, go send everyone off, said Chi Nikan. After the concubines left, Chi Yunruo also returned to his own suite. Upon his departure, Chi Nikan's expression was at its darkest of the day. Consort Ji did not even mention giving back the ledger, deeds and keys to your highness. They even talked about Master Ji. Nanny Song's voice betrayed her displeasure. What was the meaning of that? At least that tertiary consort Li seems like a good person. Chi Nikan lowered her gaze. She absent-mindedly slapped the tea kettle. A moment passed. Nanny Song, just you watch. None of them are simple. Chapter End